What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is a series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in Modern Warfare. And in today's episode, we're going to be covering the first of the Season 6 weapons, and this is the AS Val. And first up, as always, let's kick it off with the damage profile. Our base damage profile with this is 3023, which means it's a 4 to 5 shot kill. However, we do get an upper torso multiplier, which takes our upper torso damage to 3728. And this means up close you can get a three shot kill as long as at least two of your bullets hit them in the upper torso. The third bullet can hit anywhere else in the body, doesn't matter. You can get a three shot kill. As for headshots, our damage profile here is 4736. You can't get a two shot kill with this gun even if both hit the head. And therefore headshots are really not that important. It's mainly that upper torso multiplier you want to be aiming for. Moving on to rate of fire, we have the exact same rate of fire as the M13 based on my testing at 923 rounds per minute, which is very, very fast. And what that means for our time to kill potential is assuming we're hitting those upper torso shots in the three shot kill range, our time to kill is 130 milliseconds, which is ridiculously fast. This is just so much faster than the average full auto gun out there. You will be dropping people nearly instantly. And even if you don't get that three shot kill and you're getting a four shot kill, you still have an extremely competitive time to kill at 195 milliseconds. So yeah, this gun absolutely excels in the time to kill department. As for our ranges, that three shot kill potential, assuming we're hitting upper torso, that extends out to about 30 meters or so, which is a very solid range value for an assault rifle. As for hardcore, we have the exact same damage drop off point, but I just wanted to point out it's a guaranteed one shot kill out to that 32 and a half meters or so. And that applies even if you are shooting them in the foot, for instance, because our base damage is 30 within that range, which is nice to see. But next up we have hip fire, and there's really no surprises here. It's pretty much the same as nearly all of the other assault rifles. The only exceptions are the FAL as well as the FR556. So hip fire is quite solid on this gun. Then having a look at our idle sway, we can see here that there isn't much idle sway with this gun. There's a little bit of slow movement while you're aiming down sight, but it's not that bad at all. As for our recoil though, this is one of the downsides of this gun. It does have quite a bit of recoil. It climbs pretty quickly and it does have a little bit of a curve to it. It does tend to kick a little to the left to start with and then it corrects itself and comes back to the right. But the overall general trend is still pretty much straight upward, which means it's not that bad to predict and control this. It's just a lot of recoil that you have to deal with. As for handling, we've got a great aim down sight time at 234 milliseconds, and our sprint out times are standard for the assault rifle category at 267 milliseconds for our normal sprint out time, and about 400 milliseconds for our tactical sprint out time. Getting into magazine capacity, we have a very small magazine, especially considering the fire rate of this gun at just 20 rounds, but we at least get 80 in reserve, so it does give us four spare mags instead of just three, which is usually the standard. So that's nice at least, you still burn through ammo fairly quickly, but you don't necessarily need scavenger with this gun. Then let's have a look at our reload time, and our standard reload time is just 1.5 seconds, which is right around average for an assault rifle, not slow by any means, but also not like super super fast. However, if we want to speed that up, we can use sleight of hand, which will cut it down to 1.17 seconds. Not a massive improvement, and therefore it's really not necessary to use sleight of hand, but you might want to just due to how fast you burn through those magazines. Now, moving on to mobility, we've got a pretty standard movement speed for assault rifles at 95%. However, our aim down sight strafe speed is definitely on the faster side for an assault rifle in this game at 53%. Now, one last little base stat that I wanted to mention here is the fact that even the base version of this gun has boosted penetration values, and therefore it behaves kind of like an LMG when shooting through walls rather than an assault rifle, and that's something you really want to be aware of while using this. But now let's get into the unique attachments and let's just first up cover the conversion or the 10 round mags of SPP ammunition that you can put in this, which converts this into a semi-auto. And when it comes to our damage profile with these rounds, it's actually the same as the 10 round magazine on the AMAX. So you can see there our limb damage, or our base damage is below 50. So it's going to be at least three shots to kill if you're not hitting the torso. However, even just hitting one shot to the lower torso mixed in with a limb shot up close will give you a two shot kill. And it's worth noting that up close, you do have the potential to get a one shot kill to the head in core game modes because you deal exactly 100 damage. As for our rate of fire potential, this appears to be capped right around 500 rounds per minute, which is roughly the same as the FAL and noticeably faster than the 10 round mags on the AMAX. So you get all the damage potential of the AMAX 10 round mags 
but you get a much higher fire rate potential. And what this means for our time to kill potential, assuming the two shot kill, this is 120 milliseconds. And when you get a three shot kill, this is 240 milliseconds. Then I wanted to take a look at the ranges and you can see that first damage range. This is where it's a two shot kill as long as you're hitting any torso shots mixed in. And also this first damage range is where you're capable of getting a one shot kill to the head. And that extends to just beyond 25 meters. Then from 25 meters up to about 48 meters or so, this is where it does require you to hit two upper torso shots to get a two shot kill and you can no longer get a one shot headshot. And then beyond that, it's just gonna be a three shot kill. Now, moving on to a few other things to point out here, our magazine capacity is 10 rounds, obviously, and we get 40 in reserve. Our reload time is sped up from the base reload time. It's just 1.19 seconds, which is actually almost the same as our sleight of hand reload time with the base AS Val. But we can also use sleight of hand on this one and cut that reload time down to 1.07 seconds, which isn't really that much faster and I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it. But finally, it is worth mentioning our aim down sight time is improved by just one frame at 60 FPS. It's just very slightly faster using these 10 round mags. And our overall movement speed is also boosted by 3%. So you actually move around like an SMG when using these 10 round mags. But after that, I should also point out the recoil with the 10 round mags. It's pretty high. For a semi-auto, this is a decent amount of recoil. Not only does it jump upward pretty quickly, it also tends to cut pretty hard to the left after you fire your first three rounds or so. So if we are comparing this to like an FAL, for instance, which has a similar fire rate as a semi-auto gun, this is nowhere near as accurate. So that pretty much covers it for these 10 round mags. I also wanted to point out, I made a video yesterday Currently, or at least at the time of recording this video, if you use the 10 round mags on this, it basically ignores walls. So you don't lose any damage shooting through basically any surface on any of the maps that I've discovered so far. So you can shoot through an entire map and still deal full damage with this. Although this is something I anticipate will be patched very, very soon. Maybe even by the time this video comes out, that will have been patched. But I thought I'd mention it here anyway. Now, moving on to the other unique attachments for this gun, let's start it off with the barrels. The first barrel we have access to is the VLK 105mm Sova barrel. And with this one, just like the base barrel, it does have an integrated suppressor. I don't think I mentioned that earlier. This gun is always suppressed, no matter how you run it, it's always got a suppressor on it. And with this barrel specifically, the upside is our aim down sight time is just very slightly improved. It's just one frame faster at 60 FPS. And that comes at the cost of a loss of bullet velocity and also a 15% reduction to our damage range. Even though it's not stated there, we do get that 15% reduction. And therefore, I would say that really minor upside to your aim down sight time just isn't worth it for that 15% reduction. As for the second barrel we have access to, this is the Stovall SOF. And with this one, we get that same improvement to our aim down sight time at just one frame faster at 60 FPS. But on top of this, it also gives us a bit of a boost to our movement speed. It gives us a 2% boost here. The downsides for this one though are fairly hefty. First up, we get a 25% reduction to our damage range. And on top of that, it adds even more recoil to this gun. And you can see the inconsistency here. With this recoil comparison, the first recoil plot I did there, it just shot up to the sky. The second one wasn't quite as bad, but you can see that there's just a lot of inconsistency with that. And overall, I would say this is absolutely the worst barrel that you could use for this gun, and I would never recommend it. In my opinion, it just makes the gun much worse. But finally, we do have one more barrel that we have access to for this gun, and this is the VLK 200mm OSA barrel. And with this one, we get a 25% increase to our damage range, which is a great boost. Also, that comes with a boost to our bullet velocity, which is great. And the downside to this is it does slow down our aim down sight time by roughly two frames at 60 FPS. So our new aim down sight time is 267 milliseconds. This barrel is not a bad choice. That 25% increase to your damage range is awesome. And depending on what you're going for, it could absolutely be worth that slight reduction to our aim down sight speed. And that covers it for the barrels that we currently have access to with this gun. Next up, let's get into the extended mag that we have, and this is just a 30 round extended mag, unfortunately. That's the biggest magazine capacity you can get with this gun. And even with this boost to your magazine capacity, you still burn through that magazine so fast due to the really fast rate of fire that you have. But with this one, it does very slightly slow down your aim down sight time just by one frame at 60 FPS, not really a big deal. And also our movement speed is reduced by about 1%. Overall, assuming you have it unlocked, you should absolutely be using the 30 round mag, in my opinion, just because this gun needs all the help it can get when it comes to the magazine capacity. 
But finally for unique attachments, we actually have a unique stock attachment for this gun, and this is called the VLK Strelik stock. And with this, the thing that's really interesting is it actually helps with recoil control, which you don't normally expect to see in the stock category. But let's take a look at the recoil here, and it's actually pretty clear. This helps a noticeable amount with your recoil. It really cuts down on that magnitude and makes things much easier to control. And therefore, this is actually a great attachment to help you with the recoil on this gun. Now, in addition to the boosted recoil control, it also helps with our aiming stability. So we have even less idle sway, which is great. And that also applies while aiming and walking. So it keeps you nice and steady on target. The downsides to this though are we do get a 15% reduction to our aim down sight stray speed, which is a very noticeable reduction. It slows us down quite a bit while aiming down sight. And on top of that, our aim down sight speed is reduced by one frame at 60 FPS, which again, not that big of a deal. This still gives you a very normal sort of assault rifle aim down sight speed. And with that, that covers it for all of the stats that I wanted to share for this gun. And now it's time to move into some of my favorite attachment combinations and example class setups. And the first one that I've got here, this is just the best AS Val setup. If you're not using the 10 round mags, in my opinion, this is the best way to go. So with this, we are using the 200 millimeter barrel, which is awesome. We've got that Strelik stock to help with our recoil control, which is great. We've got the Merc foregrip to also help with recoil. So we're really trying to cut down on that to make this as accurate as possible. Obviously, we've also got the 30 round magazine just because you do burn through those so, so quickly. And then finally, we have the stippled grip tape just to help a little bit with our aim down sight and sprint out time since we are hurting our aim down sight time a decent amount with some of our other attachments. And that's it for this particular setup. I really like the iron sights of this gun, so I don't need an optic or anything, and I actually feel quite comfortable with this setup. Now, taking that into an example class setup, nothing too surprising here. This is a pretty standard multiplayer class setup for me. I've got whatever secondary you want. I've got the Renetti on there. We've also got EOD, Ghost, as well as Tune Up, so we can get our Dead Silence as fast as possible. That's just kind of my go-to setup most of the time in multiplayer. Our Lethal is going to be a Thermite, and our Tactical is going to be a Stim Shot. This is just a great sort of all-around rushing, flanking sort of class. You stay off the radar, you take people out nearly instantly with that time to kill. And I've actually been having quite a bit of fun using this. As for our second attachment combination here, this one is with the 10 round magazine. So it's semi-auto and we're trying to just shoot through walls as much as possible, especially now in the gun's current state. But with this, we once again have that 200 millimeter barrel just because it's an awesome barrel that gives us some great benefits. We've got the Solo Zero Mini Reflex. That's just my preference. You could zoom in a bit more if you wanted to, since it is kind of like a DMR. So you could use like that Dragonoff scope or a VLK 3X if you wanted to, but I just like that Mini Reflex. Then we've got the Skeleton Stock on here, and this helps with our aim down sight time, but it also makes it so we can really strafe quickly back and forth while firing with this. And that's awesome for trying to evade shots in the middle of a gunfight. And then finally, we once again have the Merc foregrip just to help us control that recoil a bit because even in semi-auto mode, we get a decent amount of recoil with this. Now taking this one into an example class setup, this one is all about the wall bangs. And even after they eventually fix the bug where you don't lose any bullet damage at all, this gun is still supposed to have great bullet penetration with this 10 round mag in it. So this could still apply down the road. So for this one, we once again have EOD. Our second perk though is gonna be restock and that's gonna be key combined with these snapshot grenades. This is what allows us to see people through walls basically and then just light them up after we see them. On top of that, we also have spotter. And the reason I'm using spotter, it's not something I normally use. Since we're all about that bullet penetration with this and you don't lose any bullet damage, you can see claymores and munitions boxes and everything like that through walls and you can shoot through any wall, so you can blow up that claymore or that munitions box from effectively across the map if you wanted to because you don't lose that bullet damage and you can't do the same with every other gun in the game. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the AS Val. As for my opinion on this gun, so the base version of the gun I think is really solid for multiplayer. The time to kill is just ridiculous. It's nice having that integrated suppressor. It does take a little bit of getting used to with the recoil control and stuff. And also you really have to manage your magazines wisely because you burn through them so quickly. But yeah, I think it's great for multiplayer. However, thinking about Warzone, it's not really the greatest gun in Warzone in my opinion, especially not as a primary weapon, just because of that magazine capacity, but also recoil you could argue as well. You're just gonna run into way too many problems with this gun. At least that's my initial impression of this. Now, having said that, I would say the 10 round mags are definitely viable in Warzone. I don't know if it's like top tier or anything, but definitely viable and usable in Warzone. 
But I do think there are better guns out there for Warzone. Of course, that is just my opinion. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about the AS Val so far? Do you really like using it or not so much? Just let me know those thoughts down below. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are also waiting for the SPR 208 gun guide. That is gonna be coming maybe tomorrow if I can really push it, but more likely I think we'll see that one on Saturday. So if you guys enjoyed this, a like rating is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.